again, it's Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit. Talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week. We are in the Hercules Tire Studios in Concord, North Carolina. So glad that you have joined us. Ashley Stremme and Steve Post here. And big show, we're going to talk a little California sprint car racing with DJ Neto. But uh, Ashley, you had the chance. I saw your smiling face on Dirt Vision. <laughs> we have spent the last month talking Bristol, baby. And Bristol, World of Outlaws, excitement, energy, passion. It appears from where I'm sitting, they had it. How was it there at the track? Oh, my goodness. It was just the atmosphere was electric. Um, you know, I've seen numerous cup races there over the years, and it was no different for a dirt sprint car show. Uh, even the big block modifieds, yeah. right? They were just eyes wide, so excited that they were getting the opportunity to kind of come out of the Northeast and mm -hmm, get to yeah. show what they do. But, yeah, the sprint car world was like, this place is incredible. It is. There will be a lot of Bristol on our show over the course of time because a lot happened up there. Yes. But it is just such an exciting time. It really, truly is. And the dirt is now coming up. Mm -hmm. And Bristol will become a concrete track for this fall's <laughs> races for NASCAR. So very, very exciting. There is an energy level in the sport right now. I, I shared with you before the uh, show we started. Talladega Super Speedway for the NASCAR race. We had thirty thousand fans. Mm -hmm. You said you said to me during pre pre, pre show. You said it, it felt like a cup race. Well, Talladega felt like a cup race, and it's about time because fans back in the stands. Uh, I went to USCS over at the Talladega Short Track. Ricky yeah. Stenhouse Jr. Yes. One place was bonkers with people. Virginia the week before the place was bonkers with yes. people. So. Uh, I think we're seeing our way clear of the uh, of the, uh, the past year, year and a half. Yes, I think we're all excited to get back to our normal life, and uh, it's it's good to see that we're able to finally start to do that. Truly is, and if your normal life is winning races like David <laughs> Gravel, well, it was a big weekend. Here is the twenty five thousand dollar pass at the Bristol Showdown. David Gravel and Logan Schuart. Johnny Gibson with a call on Dirt Vision. And now for the Dry Dean Deaf Defying Move of the Week, where one driver simply amazes us with their on track moves. Logan Schuart to the low side. The car gets a little crossed up. An opportunity for David Gravel to the inside down the back straightaway. New leader David Gravel as they race to the white flag. That Deaf Defying Move was brought to you by Dry Dean Diesel All Deaf, the official deaf of the world of outlaws and wheelmen everywhere. Visit drydean.com for more information. Pride. Passion. Performance. We are. We are. We are Team Drydean. Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit rolling along. The Hercules Tire Studios is where we're at in Concord, North Carolina, and we are going to the Hercules Tires Hotline. Joining us from the great state of California is DJ Neto. Hello, DJ. Welcome back to Wing Nation, man. Hey, thanks for having me. Well, you have kicked off. Okay, it's been a weird time. We understand that. You're the 2019 champion for the NARC King of the West, and you're the reigning champion. All right, that's because 2020 did happen but didn't happen and all of that. But you come back and you start to defend your title by a win at Stockton to kick things off for the season. I would have to say that that had to be a great way for you to kick off your year and get the 2021 campaign rolling out there in California. Yeah, no, it was a it was a great start to the year. You know, uh, I I think my last win in the 410 series out here came in 2017. Um, that 20 2019 campaign, we we're just we we're always there. You know, second third, fifth, and I mean, we're just so consistent. Our ball sign was so good, but it always seemed like, you know, we'd be contending for something and just kind of run out of time throughout that year. And so to kick off 2021, and you know, I teamed up with Drew at the end of uh, 2019, I mean, at the end of 2018, or at the end of 2019, excuse me. And so he, he's got he's got our car balanced really good, and for us just to jump right in this, you know, you know go into this year and kick off with a win and then follow up with a King of Thunder 410 win as well. Um, our 410 program is really stout. He's got, he's got that car really good. So I'm, I'm really happy with that. So you mentioned uh, Drew, Drew Warner, your crew chief. 
What has it been like working with him? Obviously, success right out of the box. But what is it that Drew's really bringing to the table that you guys are meshing so with, well with so quickly? I think it's his attitude towards everything. You know, he has always has a positive outlook towards it. And, uh, you know, no, no matter what, how we run, he's always trying to get better. And, I mean, even if we win, he's still, he's still looking at things to get better with that race car. And, and uh, I have a lot, of, a lot of faith and trust in him. And I, I know that, you know, whenever I do get to the racetrack and get racing that I, I have one of the best guys in my corner and with the best equipment and that, you know, I'm equally as good as everybody else. I feel, you know, nobody is going to be able to just beat us off, you know, race car position. So I just, I think he, he puts his best foot forward and he knows, he knows the race cars. He, he puts a lot of time and effort into the little details, to try to make it so, so good. And, and I just, I, I I'm lucky to drive it and work with him. That is awesome to have someone that you have that much confidence and comfort in as well. And it is obviously showing as you now roll into this season. DJ, you mentioned, and you're from Hanford, uh, and you mentioned the King of Thunder 410s. And 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 what's the, the, the whole setting with 410 racing? We have the King of the West NARC Series, which is the big tour out there. But your local track, uh, you know, with uh, at, at Keller Auto Speedway with Peter Murphy, What's going on with the four tens out there that uh, there seem to be they seem to be growing in count out there? Yeah, I think with Peter taking on Hanford, I mean it's been a whole crazy how much work he's done and turned that place around the facility and the racetrack. Um, so with him adding like the King of Thunder four tens as well, he has the three sixty series there, but you know he's added more four ten races. So with the traveling series and then plus the local series, you know there's more four ten races than we've had in you know past years and. And Peter does such a like great job with trying to work to, to make it easy on drivers and, and uh, you know pay if races and and working with drivers to see what they would like to see to make it better. And I think he, you know people want to go support a guy that's trying to make it so much better for us. And he certainly has. Peter has really done amazing stuff out there. That is for sure with the King of the West uh, or the King of the Wing series out there at uh, at Hanford Speedway. Uh, DJ, hang in there with us. Everyone else, stick around. We're going to have more with DJ Neto in just a moment. Hey, Ashley, what are you up to? Oh, I just stopped by to grab some sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. You can never go wrong with a Honeycrisp. They're light, crisp, and full of perfectly balanced flavor. Oh, hey. You could always go with one of their classics, the Gala or Fuji. They're both sweet and juicy. Grown in the heart of Eastern Washington, Sage Fruit Company works hard on the farm and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears to consumers all year long. Well, I couldn't decide which ones. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll race you to the checkout. Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit rolling along. It's the Hercules Tire Hotline where we're being chatted up with DJ Neto. He is the reigning King of the West uh, NARC Series champion. And DJ, when I don't know much about a driver outside of the race car, I search around other people I know. And I reached out <laughs> to Dominic Selzy and said, tell me about DJ Neto. And he told me, and I don't even believe this, I don't believe much the Selzy's tell me. Is it true... And tell me more if it is true. Did you dress up like Dominic Selzy for three straight Halloweens? No, that is not true <laughs> at okay. all. So what's the story? Dominic, Dominic being Dominic. No, uh, my fiance this past uh, Halloween, she we were invited to a Halloween party, and she's like, "Hey, I got an idea. You dress up as me, and I'll dress up as you on a race day." I didn't really want to do it, but. Uh, Sometimes you just got to do things you don't want to do and make the other half happy. So I did it and uh, told her not to post a picture anywhere. Well, she definitely didn't listen to that. And uh, Dominic saw it. So I'm assuming that's what he's referring to. <laughs> well, hold on a second. If he's saying he dressed up like Dominic and Dominic's now comparing himself to your fiance. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. So he's he's, he's comparing himself to a girl. <laughs> no doubt. How about that? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that Dominic has turned around the way Dominic wanted it to. That's, no, probably yeah. not. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, so DJ, I know you told us at the top before we were on air that you are actually working right at the moment. Your family is in the farming industry. So, so what are we kind of bothering you and taking you away from right at the moment? Well, today we're struggling to get going because we got a little bit of rain last night. So this 
this time of year we're harvesting wheat silage for its berries. So last night with the rain, the feed's all wet, so we're not able to start quite yet. But it sun pops through and it's starting to dry up a little bit. So I'm shuttling people around, um, trying to get things going so we could get back to harvesting uh, the, the wheat for the dairies. Now you guys, uh, Netto Ag, you have, it's my understanding you have a harvesting business, but you also have a uh, dairy business as well. Um, just just sounds like sounds like you got your hands full with that business out there. Yeah, no, we're uh, we seem to keep busy out here between the agriculture industry. Uh, we we have a the harvesting business where we custom harvest for other dairies throughout the Fresno, Kings, and Tulare County. Then we also have a uh, three thousand cow dairies as well. So we're milking about three thousand cows on our own dairies, and we have a little farming business as well where we uh, have some almonds and pistachios that uh, my brother takes care of for for my dad and uncle. So. Between everything, uh, we seem to keep busy, uh, especially this time of year. It's, it's our, this is about, for the next month, we are our busiest time of the year. So cool. I just love to dig deeper and find yeah. out little tidbits like this. And and what's so cool, I was also trying to search the internet like Steve was, trying to find out things about you, DJ. And I came across a post where you went to a racetrack and won, and you donated your winnings to a local food bank. What made you decide to do that? And obviously, it's an, it's a hurrah for you. That's absolutely awesome. Yeah, it was like last year uh, during COVID. Um, we was right at the end of our harvest season, and we all kind of wanted to get away for a day. So we uh, went to Marysville to race, and they ended up cutting the purse because they, they tried to say because of COVID. So it was all, they cut it down to like $700 to win. But we just wanted to go race and get away from everything. and. My uncle said, hey, we're not going to race for money like that, but we're going to donate 100% of the winnings tonight to the local food bank in town. I said, okay, awesome. Well, we got there. We didn't qualify that great. We were starting 11. Well, I guess throughout the night, they were raising money for the race. So it ended up getting all the way up to $2,500. And uh, we started 11th, and we ended up winning it. And uh, it was $2,500. And my uncle goes, hey, we said we're donating money. We're donating money. That's what we did. Donated all to the food bank. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. I love. It. I, I didn't realize. I knew that they'd cut the purses out there. I didn't realize that it got escalated during the course of the running. That's uh, that is really neat. We joked around DJ about the Selzies, and California has some great family names. When you look at the Selzy, and of course, drag racing and sprint car racing now. When you look at the Cadings, when you look at the Ross, when you look at Maury Williams and everything. Um, to be able to start to add the Netto name to that racing history, what does that mean to you? And what does that mean to your family? Because you're a family racing team. Oh, it means a lot to us. You know, my dad and uncle, they, they, they definitely started a great team here. And, uh, you know, I just, I'm happy to be able to be the guy that drives it and also get results, you know, be competitive against the Ross, the Selzies, um, you know, and, and Maury Williams. So it, it means a lot to me, but I think it also means a lot to them to know that you know they're considered one of the top-notch teams out here in California, and know that they're bringing equal equipment as those guys to the racetrack every weekend, and and hopefully we can do that for years to come. No doubt about it, DJ. Ultimately, winning championships out there, being in your home state, and knowing how much California is growing for sprint car racing is is absolutely incredible. But do you have a, a future that goal that you want to reach is is it the world of outlaws or do, do you just enjoy racing around home in california uh you know when i was 18 19 years old before i you know did college and everything you know I, I wanted to be you know possibly on the world of outlaws and then you know i had the opportunity to travel to ohio and race with the leaders a couple times and i i appreciate them so much because they they were awesome to me and helping me you know, what it's like to be out of California and race and, and traveling just wasn't my thing. I really enjoyed family and I think, you know, I'm so busy and involved with our family business that it will never be a reality where I could race with the World of Outlaws. Um, there's a couple crown jewel events throughout the, you know, Midwest and back east that I'd like to hit before I decide to hang it up. Um, but as far as, you know, consistently racing, I, I love racing. California and I love doing what I'm doing and I think throughout the next couple of years we will make trips 
you know, like I think this year we're planning to go to like the Jackson Nationals and and uh, Houston in the summer. Um, so and then you know maybe next year I would ideally like to get to Williams Grove and and race there for the National Open and and Eldora for you know the Kings Royal because I've already done the Nationals and didn't have great success, but there are like I would like to say at the end of my career that you know I was able to go to those events and participate in them and and you know I did it. I yes. love it. I really, <laughs> truly do. DJ, I loved having a chance to catch up with you. We'll let you get back to the farm business there, but appreciate the time joining us here on Wing Nation. Thank you guys for having me, and uh, hopefully we talk soon. There we go. DJ Nettle joining us here on Wing Nation. Stay with us. Our Tweet Your Seat Tweet of the Week is coming up next. Power isn't born. It's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Thank y'all for watching Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. It is time for the tweet, your seat, tweet or tweets of the week yes, this, this week. Although they come from the same person. It comes from Jaden Wagner. Uh, the first picture here, a couple of Snyder County boys made their way to Bristol. Right. <laughs> Obviously, Snyder County is in Pennsylvania, um, home of Seal and Scrub Speedway. That's right. Okay. And then, uh, so Jaden, just real quick about him. He's a 16-year-old guitar player who loves classic rock. And sprint cars are his life. Now, when you merge the two together. Look at this tweet. Okay, a picture with him, his guitar, David Gravel, and Rico Abreu. It says, thank you, David Gravel, Rico Abreu, Paul McMahon, and everyone who came down to listen to me last night. The rain had us bummed, but we redeemed it. <laughs> there. Okay, you all had a good weekend. Jaden might have had a better weekend than everybody else. No doubt about it. That is great stuff for sure. So, appreciate Jaden sending us those tweets. Neat, neat stuff. All right. Let's take a lap around the sprint car world. Turn number one, David Gravel's Bristol experience. Okay, there's a kid by the name of Kevin Striegel. He's starting his own, has started his own video production business, Kevtron Media. His father, Jeff Striegel, is one of our announcers here mm -hmm. at uh, Motor Racing Network. Kevin said, hey, I'm going to Bristol. I want to do something. I said, let's just follow David Gravel around Bristol. Little did we realize <laughs> that we would have this spectacular David Gravel experience from Bristol. Well, they pumped our motor, so that means a good thing. We passed, right, Cody? 406. All right. We had four to go, so we were plenty good. We got like two, three rebuilds on these sleeves. So we got her done, got the dub. Here's the sword. I didn't show you guys the sword up close and personal, but it's pretty legit. Great, great weekend, guys. Uh, swept it. It was not easy, though. We uh, qualified second, won our heat, drew the outside pole, started second in the A. Logan got the jump. Uh, let's see. We stayed with Logan pretty decent. It was a restart. Donnie got by us, fell back to third. Thought, man, my chances were pretty slim of winning this race. There was another restart and was able to get by Donnie. And then uh, we got to lap traffic, was in second. Logan was struggling a little bit in lap traffic. We were closing. And I didn't even know it was two to go, but it got a huge run on Logan on the top. Slid him going to three, coming to the white flag. And uh, Logan ended up breaking on the white flag down the back stretch. So I had no idea it was the last lap. Um, so there was a caution with one to go. Green, white, checkered. And I was able to hold on to clean, clean air, clean traffic. Man, the car felt really, really good. Ran the bottom really nice and then ripped the top really good. So, awesome weekend. Trey, Cody, Scotty did a great job. Gave me a great car. Motors ripped all weekend and can't for, ask for much more. It was 25 grand to win tonight. I'm sold out of the t-shirt trailer, guys. Online orders will be backed up a little bit. Uh, i just been really, really good. So, um, stay patient for me, please. I'll get you all my stuff as soon as possible. The reorder's coming this week, but... This week, guys, this weekend, my YouTube channel blew up a decent amount, so uh, I, I appreciate all the love. Got a lot of views, got a lot of new subscribers, so if you're new to the channel, thank you, guys. I hope you like uh, all we're doing. Got to thank Kevin at Kevtron Media, Carter Assal, um, Cameron Sage, uh, Dave Byro, all those guys make my social media happen. 
I'm not talented with this video editing. All I do is talk in front of this little camera. But uh, without them, my stuff wouldn't look cool. So I got my t-shirt trailer and truck coming up. So I'll show you that soon, guys. Really excited. But we did it. It's Bristle Baby, and we took it down. We appreciate Kevtron Media, Kevin Striegel, for bringing us that. That's turn number one. Turn number two, oh, Ohio is all abuzz because Eldora is back, Ashley. And the, big. And big. <laughs> the 68th season starts next weekend. Let's race to World of Outlaw, NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars, and USAC AMSOIL National Sprint Cars. Let's race two Friday and Saturday nights. All part of a big, big season, though. They are. Uh, even with the late models, the Dream, the World 100, and, of course, the King's Royal doubles to make up for 2020 and all the garbage we went through um first time for the fans at eldora in 20 months oh, 20 months we haven't been to eldora insane oh my gosh that is nuts that's for sure and uh i've never been to the king's royal and by the end of that weekend i'll have two <laughs> checked off so i cannot wait i'm going to get those knocked out so there's turn number two let's head down the back straight away into turn number three you were there for this one yes. jack's number 22 ashley I don't even really know what to say. I knew about it uh, probably two weeks before it happened. And me trying to keep a secret is not easy, especially when it's something so cool about a sprint car. But, yes, uh, his farewell tour car, Rico Abreu, surprised him with the old sponsor, probably one more, is so iconic, the Pennzoil number 22. Um, 72-time World of Outlaw winner and 25 race schedule in this car. And I think he has over 40, I forget the number wins in this iconic car just incredible yeah some of the big wins the historical big one the king's royal he won it twice the gold cup i mean it's amazing so look for rico at a track near you in the Pennzoil number 22 jack or jack jack, jack not yeah. rico rico's the one who made it all happen <laughs> that's right rico's heart is so amazing to it do is. stuff like yes. this and finally through turn number three off turn number four Darren Pittman is back. Yes, he returns next weekend to Eldora for the World of Outlaws. Really neat deal for Darren Pittman. This also makes my heart super yes, happy. Yes, you know, exactly. it's just such a good guy. Kind of didn't end how he wanted it to. Thought he had a lead to go another direction, and then that all fell through. So it's so good to see him finally back on the racetrack. Yep, the Swindell Speed Labs car with Kevin and Jordan Swindell. And that's going to be a limited schedule. We don't know much about it other than it starts next weekend at Eldora. Can't wait to have Pittman back on the racetrack. So much good stuff, that is for sure. And there you have it, a lap around the sprint car world. Stay with us, more Wing Nation, in just a moment. I'm not ready yet. Hi. All right, I'm ready now. Hey, Ashley, what are you up to? I just swing. <laughs> I got it, I got it. I just stopped by to pick up my sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. Yeah, okay. <laughs> This is what it looks like when you do it. Yeah. Ta <laughs> Take a deep breath, okay. count to five. It's like running across a rhythm section at a motocross track. <laughs> Mine was perfect. It is Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit. Love when we get a chance to talk to a guy like DJ Neto and hear his story a little yes. behind the scenes. So, a little bit of a change going to happen as we go forward. Ashley and I have shared this table, but uh, we're no longer going to share this table. We're going to continue to share the show yes. as the family business is bow tied up and you're Pennsylvania bound, which is so exciting. Yes, uh, bittersweet for sure. Um, this area, y'all have been so great to me. I'm extremely honored to be a part of this show and glad that it will be going forward. But um, it's it's bittersweet leaving this area knowing how good it's been to us. Well, it has. It's been great having you in studio. But one of the things the pandemic taught us is we can do stuff via Zoom. Yes. Had we not had that, yes. we'd have probably been saying goodbye at this point. <laughs> now we're true. saying, okay, I'll Zoom you next week. <laughs> and we'll continue on here with Wing Nation. That's so right. it is cool. And then, of course, it's not too far down the road, the Weikert Memorial. And we're yes. doing live shows from the Speed Palace Port Royal. So it's like. We'll miss you a couple of weeks, and then we'll see you soon. That's exactly right. And back to our road shows, finally. I know. Good. Yes. Good. It is going to be great. <laughs> and I'm also jealous because you're going to be in Central Pennsylvania where they have sprint cars every All the time. Weekend. <laughs> All the time. And I used to boast to you and to Aaron, now you're going to be returning the favor. So, oh boy, the circle of life, that's yes, for sure. Yes. Thanks again for joining us this week on Wing Nation, presented by Sage Street.